All right, we're going to open with an old southern tune called Didn't He Ramble? Oh, Didn't He Ramble? And it was usually played coming home from the cemetery. And the words talk about someone who had a good life, but now it's time to move on. So after the, uh, the funeral, when they're leaving the cemetery, they might take it out on a slow jersey, and then they're, then they're boogieing down the street. If you have you ever seen any of those... Uh, shots coming out of New Orleans at the, the funerals. Oh, didn't he ramble? Anytime you're ready. some of the words. Yeah, hey, 1920, the tune is Avalon, and everybody here must know the story about Al Joseph and uh, <laughs> the fine he got for stealing money from uh, an opera. And, uh, all right, 1920, Avalon. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
1935, Fats Waller, big hit, called, I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. Uh, and I always talk about Billy Williams. He recorded it in 1957. He was on all the Friday night and Saturday night television shows singing the tune until they found out he was doing drugs. And that was the end of his career. All right, Nick has got the words for it. I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. <laughs> and King Oliver 
The note I have was 1929. They put this tune together. It's called Whatcha, What You Want Me to Do.
want you to do. Someday we'll get an answer to that question. Yeah. Here's a tune that came out in 1930. Uh, I like to talk about how jazz was changing at that point. Jazz had been around, we call it the jazz decade, but it was for more like 20, 30 years. It probably started around 1985. 1925 on, it started to change. Yeah. And, uh, and around 1930, the big bands were coming in. You know, the Glenn Miller, the Tommy Dorsey, uh, Goodman, and all the rest of those guys. And uh, this is a tune that was right, right during that change period. It's called, I Want a Little Girl. I want a little girl to call my own. She must be someone still alone. Yes, I want a little girl.
Jimmy McHugh wrote this song. Uh, he's a South Boston boy, did well for himself in the music business. Tied up with Dorothy Fields, I don't know if you remember that name, but Dorothy was his lyricist. She put down all the words, he wrote the music, and he had a bunch of hits. Did a lot of work on Broadway. He put this one together, probably was talking about South Boston, I don't know, but it was called The Sunny Side of the Street, 1930.
Joe King Oliver, 1923. Uh, Joe was uh, Louis Armstrong's mentor, teacher, and got him his start in, in the music industry. Uh, he died in 1952 or thereabouts of uh, heart trouble. Too broke to afford treatment. Wow. He, uh, when jazz, the jazz uh, bands left New Orleans in 1917, traveled up the river, ended up in Chicago. He took Louis Armstrong with him, and Louis was playing second cornet. And then he started writing pieces and put Louis up in the front of the band. And uh, Louis was the first first musician in a jazz band to take a solo. And from that point on, everybody had to have solos. This tune is called the Canal Street Blues. Now, Canal Street was in New Orleans, of course. Except for the time that the band tried to play on Canal Street in Boston at an Irish pub. We lasted there two weeks. Canal Street Blues. Thank you. 
Next tune, 1910, it's probably started out as a waltz and it's like the jazz guys got a hold of it. First recorded by the Peerless Quartet. I had 